Hey, this is Brock Amirs, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do a travel expense report in Chrome River at Montana State University. So this is just a note to myself that I figured I'd make a video and publish it for anybody else. So the first thing is to log into Chrome River. So you go to montana.edu and then you actually just type in Chrome River and that brings it to your login. I've already logged in, so I'll just go to mine. Uh, so I have my dashboard right here and I'm ready to start a new travel expense report. When you do a travel expense report, I kind of think of it as there's three components to it that are different than a regular expense report. So the first thing is your travel pre-authorization. So you, when you create the expense report, you have to actually associate it with your, your approved pre-authorization. So before you even start, you got to make sure you have this. So you go up here to this little menu and you come down here past your, the options to mess with your receipts and you go to pre-approvals and you come in here and you go recently submitted, return, draft. And so I go recently submitted and I can see my pre-approvals that were approved. And so I have this trip, I call it the Firefly Integration Planning Review. And this was submitted before I traveled and it was approved before I traveled. And that's important because I have to tie that to this travel expense report. So that's the first component of this that makes this unique. The second component is your receipts. So you're going to add all your receipts for your airline, hotel, and Uber, and all that sort of stuff. And then the third piece is your per diem. So I'm going to walk through how you do all of those. Okay, so we are, we're in Chrome River. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the upper right and put and hit this new button. And I'm going to say new expense report. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and the, the recommendations for the fields of this report name are Lemire's. I'm going to do travel, and then I'll do Firefly, and then I give it a... Uh, my own code for the index that's going to be associated with. Copy and paste that, pump it into business purpose. So I always do those two as the same. And then I do the start date, which is uh, the 11, and then I do the 13th, and then my department or my college is engineering, and then I come down here, and for report type, I do travel. And when I do that, this becomes a unique uh, expense report. Okay? It's a travel expense report. And then I come down here and mine was out of state. Step one is you have your import pre-approval. So that's where you want to click on that and you click up here in the box and it shows you what you have available to tie to this. So here was that Firefly integration planning thing and that I hit import and that ties my expense or travel authorization report to this report. And so I've got piece one done of that. Okay, so I come over here and I hit save. And now what it's going to do is spin for a second. And so at this point, what it does is it brings in all the amounts from your travel pre-authorization, which were your guesses about how much stuff was going to cost. And it's asking you to then add receipts. <clears throat> so there probably is a way to like drag receipts into these, but I found it's just easier to go in here and just delete all of these uh, because, and then add them in as you go. Okay. So then it's like, I want to delete every single one of these, just get rid of it, delete, are you sure you want to delete this thing? Yes. I'm going to delete all my little things that I left in here. Delete, delete. And it, this seems like an extra step, but it's like I've found it's just so much faster to just bring in your receipts uh, individually. Okay. Hotels are always an interesting one. I'll talk about that in a second. But okay. So this one doesn't want to let me delete it. So I hit hotel and it's like just you have to actually click the little buttons to delete this one. So it makes it a little harder. Okay, so now I basically am ready. I have my travel expense report started. I've got my pre-authorization attached to it. And now what I'm ready to do is add expenses to it, okay? So even though you have this huge submit button there, don't hit that. So come up here and go add. And it's gonna bring up all your P card receipts that are sitting in your, your wallet. And for mine, what I've already done is I have each of these uh, P, card P card charges associated with the receipt. So I took all my receipts. I had nine receipts for this that I had PDFs for the trip and I emailed them to Chrome River and then they all came in. I dragged and dropped them onto all of the P card charges so that you see P card plus receipt. So then they're all the receipts associated with the charge and you can treat it as one item. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna add which ones I wanna add to the report. So I come down here and I got my airline and I got Uber, 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 Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. And then I go, uh, this one is hotel and then parking. Okay, so I should have nine receipts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I got my nine. Well, there's nine right there. So I hit add. And it's going to go through each and every one of them and ask stuff about it. So you come in here. The first one, it noticed it was United, so it knew it was airline. So I go ahead and tell it economy. You can only ever fly economy. Give it the index you want. So I'm going to assign it to this particular grant that I have and save it. Okay. All right. Next receipt. 
We got Uber. It recognized it was a taxi, so it wants something specific for this type of receipt. It wants the amount that you tipped. So I, luckily on Uber receipts, if you use the last receipt after you tipped, it has the tip listed right on it. And so five per, five dollars. So I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to make sure you don't tip too much. You're only supposed to tip, I think, 15%. I, I mean, it's embarrassing to tip 15% on a really low <laughs> Uber ride, so I always try to stay above five. I'm not sure... We'll, I'll lose my job over that, but whatever. So then I go ahead and hit save. I guess I'd rather just pay the difference. So if, if I had to pay MSU two bucks, I'd, I'll just do that later, as opposed to the humiliation of tipping, you know, 30 cents on a Uber ride. So I come over here, taxi, I give the tip again, boom, boom, boom. Cranking through another Uber. Notice this one, at the, uh, the first page doesn't show the tip. So I come down here to the image gallery, click on the next one that does show me the tip which is the second page. I do that, boom, boom. Okay, next one is uh, Uber again. This one was 6.49, so I'm just working through these. The only good thing about this is that the index stays the same. Okay, here's an interesting one. I had Wi-Fi, so this is Wi-Fi, but it didn't, Chrome River didn't associate it with United, it associated with GoGo. -Go. So I have to like give it some, something, you know, some sort of expense. So what I can do is I can do uh, telecom and then do internet and I'm off and running. So I'll just put Wi-Fi in here, it, optional description, but good enough. So I save that. Okay, then we're back to, here's an interesting one. This is Wi-Fi, but it's United. And so it thinks that since it's United, it's airfare. And so it's asking me stuff like, uh, what airline are you on? And it's like, I'll just give it United and I'll say I was in economy, but then I'll just say Wi-Fi for that one. And it doesn't seem to ever bounce back. So I guess that's fine. Okay, now you get to a hotel. Here, the hotel is an interesting one because hotel receipts, they want you to itemize them. So when you save on this, if you watch what happens, it'll flash this red thing, you'll see it go by, and it says, you need to itemize that. So we'll do that in a second. Last receipt is parking, it already knows what it is, parking, parking. Okay, so here's all my nine receipts, and the hotel is messed up. Hotel receipts have to be itemized, and that's because some you get one receipt from a hotel, but sometimes it has other stuff on it. So you might have like a personal room service, you might have you know, I don't know, Wi-Fi in there. You might have shipping that you mailed something. So they want you to break it apart. Mine's easy because in this particular trip, my entire amount was just the room fare. And so what I can do is I come up here and you click, I click on the receipt over here on the left or the charge. I come up here and I hit itemize. And it asks me to break down that charge into the subcategories. This whole thing is, is lodging. And so what I do is I enter the whole amount right here. So it's 291.33. And then when I save it, it says, oh, there's nothing left. You're good to go. So I got all my X's in there. So at this point, I have my travel expense, or excuse me, my travel authorization done. I've got my receipts done. And now I need to do my per diem. So you're looking at this and you're like, how do I do per diem? Well, down here is this huge submit button. Don't click that yet. That's what you do at the end. So the way you add per diem is you come up here and hit this plus sign. So now it's going to ask you, so I hit plus, uh, it's an interesting button because you hit it and it like you want it to be on this screen where you have create new. If you hit it again, it just removes the screen. So I just hit it until you get to where you want to be. So I come over here to, to add expense, create new, and I'm going to be able to come over here to meals. And so what I'm going to what I always do is I do this meal per diem wizard multiple days. I click on that and now it allows me to enter the start date and the end date and it will automatically calculate the exact amount that I get. So the question is always, when is the start, when is the end? I just checked with our accountant, and she said, the tr start of your trip is when you leave your house. And so what I do is on average, I leave my house two hours before the flight. And so on this situation, I left my house on August 11th, and I left, the plane left at 1040. That's when it took off. So I'm gonna put 840. Okay. And of course it doesn't ever take on the first shot. So you got to enter it a couple times just for fun. Okay. I got to stick. I got home. And when I get home, I tend to get up to my house about an hour after the plane lands. So the plane landed at 319. So that would mean I got home at 419. But of course this is military time. So you got to convert it to military. So that's 16. 19. And if you're in the afternoon, you just add 12 to get to military time. And so you got boom, 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 boom. Left two hours before the flight took off. I got home one hour after the flight landed. 
And then the type, what you can do is you basically have some options down here. You got, when you click in here, you can get out of state. But if you were like international, you'd click an I and it would give you all these right here. Um, this, this one, sometimes it doesn't click. It doesn't give you any options. So you click in there. So you can hit O is kind of a trick that I've learned. So hit O and it'll bring up this out of state or hit I and it'll give you the menu. But I'm going to put out of state over there. And then down here, you do it again out of state overnight, and then you're ready. So then if I go add entries, <clears throat> what it does is it calculates how much I got for my first day, second day, and third day based on the times. And I go ahead and say, thank you. And I add to report and it sprinkles those in to my expense report. So now I've got my nine receipts and I've got my three days of per diem, but it actually sticks them in like when you were traveling in the dates. So it doesn't come in as one thing. It comes in as like sprinkled in there. And I have now done all three parts of the travel expense. I, I associated with my pre-authorization. I entered my nine receipts and I went through and associated them with the type of receipts they were, the type of charges. I had to itemize that hotel. And then I added in my per diem and now I'm ready to hit submit. And it's going to say, all right, here's your full report. Your entire expense report was 986, okay, 986.25. They are going to pay me $114 for my per diem some point in the future. And then the they will, 872 is actually PCAR charges that I told them what it was. So now I'm ready. I certify, I hit submit, and I have now proof of travel. Without receipt, proof of travel. So then it asks you your proof of travel. I've never understood what this one was, but I'm just going to say, I confirm I traveled. Okay. So then I'm going to say submit. And who knows if that works? I, I do this every time and it's, it seems to work. No one ever asked me any questions. So boom, that is it. I just did a travel expense report. <laughs> okay. So one last thing I want to mention, that expense report was for me. Okay. But I traveled with a student. So here's what I've been doing. And I don't know if this is right or not, but if I come into my e-wallet, I have two P card charges and two receipts that are associated with a graduate student that I traveled with. So one was for hotel or one was hotel and one was airline. What I do is graduate students now in 2021, they do their travel pre-authorization in Chrome River. So all graduate students have an account in Chrome River and they actually go in and do a pre-authorization then they do a travel expense report, but all they do is associate with the travel expense author authorization, pre-travel authorization, and then they add their per diem. But then there's this weird thing where the receipts are on my side, not the student side. So what I end up doing is I just create a new travel expense report here, and I, I just it's not even a travel expense report. It's really, I just submit an expense report so that my accountant gets the P card charges. And then what's been happening is the accountant actually takes the receipts from me and the per diem request and travel pre-authorization from the graduate student. They merge them together at their end and then they submit it. So that's how I've been handling the grad student receipts. Maybe that'll change in the future, but as of August, 2021, that's what's been working. Okay, that's all I got. Good luck.